Hi there everybody, Mr Wilson here again um, to talk you through the um, AQA GCSE Further Maths um, kind of sample paper or specimen paper as it's sometimes referred to. So this is the kind of um, paper that they release um, when they come up with a new specification for uh, an exam just to give um, you an idea of what kind of questions they could ask on the paper. So. I'm going to talk through the uh, sample paper today and um, probably go through the first few questions. If you haven't already, then definitely check out uh, my other videos on other um, AQA Further Maths GCSE papers because obviously the more um, kind of questions you experience, um, hopefully the better you will understand um, the GCSE Further Maths specification. So let's get straight into it then with question one. So y to the power 6 times y over y to the power m is equal to y to the power 4, circle the value of m. Well, y to the power of 6 times y is going to be y to the power 7. Now, if we are dividing y to the power 7 by some other power of y, and it equals y to the power 4, well, when you divide um, two base numbers raised to a power, then you subtract the powers. So what we are basically saying is that 7 take away m is equal to 4. So m has got to be 3. So the power of m has got to be 3. Work out the value of n. a to the power of n times a to the power of 5 is equal to a to the power of 5. Well, when you multiply um, two base numbers raised to a power like this, you add the powers. So what you are basically saying is that n plus 5 is equal to 5. So in this case, n is equal to 0, because 0 plus 5 is equal to 5, so n is equal to 0. And finally then, when you have um, kind of a base number to a power brackets raised to a power, you multiply the powers. So this means uh, the same as c to the power of 5p, 5 times p is 5p, is equal to c to the power of 12. And then here, because we've got to the same base number raised to the same power, we're told they're equal. This means that 5p is equal to 12. So p is equal to 12 over 5, which is equal to, um, well, that would be 2 and 2 fifths. So it'd be 2.4 as a decimal like that. So 2.4 um, for, for that last one. A very kind of interesting question there for the sort of start. You just have to be kind of good at... Um, at, the, at your laws of indices for that one. Okay then. Question two then. Solve the cube root of 7x take away 13 is equal to 2. Well, if you want to solve an equation like this, you do the opposite of what it says. So because there is a cube root, we need to cube both sides. So if we cube the left-hand side, we get 7x take away 13 is equal to 2 cubed. Well, 2 cubed is 8. So 7x take away 13 is equal to 8 because cubing means to multiply by itself three times. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then we add 13 to both sides because it's the opposite of subtracting 13. So 7x is equal to 21. And then we divide both sides by 7. So we get x is equal to 3. So x must be 3. How could we check our answer? Well, we could sub 3 back in. 20, uh, 7 times 3 is 21, take away uh, 13 is 8, the cube root of 8 is 2. So we can just check our answer like that. Question 3 then, so a bit of expanding brackets here. Work out the values of a and b. Well, firstly we need to expand these single brackets. So we need to multiply everything on the outside of the bracket with everything on the inside of the bracket in order to expand these single brackets. So 3a times 2x, well that's going to be 6 ax subtract 3a because negative 1 times positive 3a is negative 3a plus 4ax plus 20 4 times 5 is 20 and they told us that this is identical to 60x plus b okay let's tidy up uh, this sort of stuff on the um, left hand side then so we've got a 6ax plus a 4ax that's going to be 10ax and then we've got a take away 3a and a plus 20. And that is identical to 
x plus b. Well, you'll notice that this 10ax and this 60x are the only things that contain an x in. And so therefore they must be identical to each other. They must be equal. So 10ax is equal to 60x. If you divide both sides by 10, you get ax is equal to 6x. And it's very easy to spot here, but a has got to be equal to 6. So we know that uh, a is 6. And now we can look at the terms that don't have a, an x in. So this negative 3a plus 20 and this b. And they must be equal to each other. So negative 3a plus 20 is equal to positive b. Well, we know what the value of a is because we just worked it out. It's 6. So negative 3 times 6 plus 20 is equal to b. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18 plus 20 is equal to b. And so 2 is equal to b, or if I like to write with the letter first, b is 2. So in this case, a is 6 and b is 2. So quite a sort of interesting question there. You sort of had to expand brackets and then um, sort of solve equations at the same time. So it was sort of combining two skills in one there. Um, quite generous actually for four marks. So as long as you're good at expanding brackets and then realise that it, you just need to solve some equations, that that question um, isn't loads of work for, for four marks. Okay then, ABCD is a straight line with AB to, uh, AB to BC in the ratio of five to two. And they give us a diagram, they say work out the coordinates of C. Okay then, well, one thing to, um, well, a couple of things to work out here would be how far across is it between A and B? Well, it's 2, because the x-coordinate goes from 3 to 5, so it goes across 2. And then how far does it go, does the, the coordinate go down between A and B? Well, it goes down 1.5. Okay, so because we know it goes across 2 and down 1.5 between A and B, well, between B and C, because of the ratio that we've been given, that is going to be 2 fifths of the... Um, sort of distances between A and B because it's in the ratio 2 to 5. So it means that between B and C, it's going to go across 2 times 2 fifths because it's 2 fifths of whatever it is between A and B, right, because it's in the ratio 2 to 5. And it's going to go down 2 fifths times 1.5 or 2 fifths times 3 over 2 if you want to kind of keep them as, as fractions. So that means that between B and C, it's going to go across 2 times 2 fifths is equal to uh, 4 fifths. So it's going to go from 5 across 4 fifths to C. Well, that means that the coordinate of C, the X coordinate, coordinate must be 5 plus 4 fifths which is equal to 5.8 as a decimal. And then B to C going down, well, that is 2 fifths times 1.5, and multiply the fractions together, 2 times 3 is 6, uh, 5 times 2 is uh, 10, so 6 tenths or 3 fifths. Um, so it's going to go down 3 fifths or 0 0.6, so we need to do 5.5, which is the y-coordinate. So we're looking at the y-coordinate now. It's going to go from 5.5 down 0 0.6 to 4.9. So that means the coordinate of C is 5.8 to 4.9, like that. So quite an interesting question there. Just the key part of this question is realising that it must be two-fifths of the sort of difference between A and B is B to C. So that was the key step and then just sort of a little bit of uh, manipulation with some um, fraction multiplication and, and get the answer like that. Okay, question five then. Y is equal to 2x to the power 10 take 3 over x squared. Work out dy by dx. So it's asking us to differentiate this. Now you can't actually differentiate it in this form because there is a, a fraction here. Now if you're going to do A level maths 
there is a rule for differentiating uh, fractions, something known as the quotient rule. But obviously, that is not something that's uh, taught at GCSE further math. So we need to come up with a, a different strategy. Well, we can actually just rewrite this as, we'll leave the 2x to the power 10. But whenever we have um, sort of a power on the, on the denominator of a fraction, we can write it as a negative power. So this is just the same as 3x to the power of negative 2. Well, now we can differentiate this because differentiation, all we need to do is multiply the power by the power and subtract one off the power. So 2 times 10 is 20. Take one off the power, x to the power 9. And then negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6 x to the negative 3 because we subtract one off the power. Remember, if we subtract one, it becomes more negative. So it'd be negative 3. So dy by dx is equal to 20x to the power 9 plus 6x to the negative 3. Okay, simplify fully, and then they've got this um, sort of uh, what do we call it? expression going on here. So first thing to do would be to uh, factorise as much as you can out of this and see if there's anything... Um, sort of in common with, with the numerator and the denominator. So what can we factorise from the numerator? Well, we can definitely factorise 5 because 5 goes into 15 and into 5. So we could, fi we could take 5 out. We could take an x out because both terms have an x in. And we can take a y out of the brackets as well because both terms have a y. So 5xy brackets. Well, what do I multiply 5xy by to get 15x squared y? It's 3x Take away, what do I multiply 5xy by to get 5xy squared? Well, it's just y. And then on the denominator, what could I factorise out of this? Well, I can definitely factorise 4 out. So I get 4 brackets. What do I multiply 4 by to get 12x? Well, it's 3x. And what do I multiply uh, 4 by to get 4y? Well, it's just y. And you'll notice at this stage here, we've actually got the same bracket on the numerator and the denominator. So they will cancel each other out. And you are just left with 5xy over 4, like that. So this would be uh, the same as 5xy over 4, which I guess you could write as um, 1.25xy, but um, I don't think there's any real need uh, to do that because 5 divided by 4 is, is 1.25, so you could... Um, alternatively write the answer uh, like that, but I would just leave it as a, as a fraction. That's perfectly fine. Right, let's have a look then. A, B, C, D is a rhombus with side length 8 centimetres. Angle A, B, C is equal to 60 degrees. Can work out the area of the rhombus. Give your answer in the form A square root of B centimetre squared, where A and B are integers. Okay, I really like this question because I think it is a very... Um, interesting way of using exact trig values uh, and you'll see where they come from in a second so if this is a rhombus then all the sides are the same so this is eight centimeters this is eight centimeters um, and this is eight centimeters now if I was to split this rhombus straight across corner to corner like that what you have is you have a triangle if I actually drew it with a straight line you would have a triangle here let's call this triangle A um, and you could work out the area of this triangle through the formula, area of a triangle, not the base times, half base times height, but instead we could use a half AB sine C because we have uh, angle C between sides A and B. So to work out the area of this triangle, we can do, so area is equal to a half times 8 times 8 times sine of 60. And this is where the exact trig value is coming in because you need to know the value of sine 60 without the use of a uh, calculator. Now, how do you work out the value of sine of 60? Well, there are a few ways. One way would be to use the triangle, which I think is always the, the best way of doing this. So if you have a right angle triangle with angle of 30 and 60, and it has side length 1 here 
uh, this is side length 2 and this is the square root of 3 because 2 squared taking 1 squared is 3 the square root of 3 for this side because using Pythagoras' theorem. If I want sine of 60, well, the, the opposite side is the square root of 3 and the hypotenuse is 2 because sine is equal to um, opposite divided by hypotenuse. So sine of 60 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So I can just sub that in. So I get area is equal to 8 times 8 is 64, half is 32. So this is equal to 32 um, times square root of 3 over 2. And that is just going to be 16 root 3. Now, we haven't done, obviously, because we've only just got to the, we've only just worked out A. But what you might notice is because a rhombus is when you split it in half like this, it's the same on both sides. So this triangle is exactly the same because opposite angles in a rhombus are the same and the sides are the same. So this as well will have the same area. Well, then the area of the whole rhombus, so this is the area of A, the area of A, well, the B area is also equal to 16, the square root of 3. So area of rhombus is equal to uh, 16 root 3 plus 16 root 3, which is equal to 32 root 3. And then just a quick check, have we given it in that form? Yes, we have. So I'm pretty happy with that answer. Um, I really like this question. I, thought, I think this is a really nice application of exact trig values, kind of disguised in a area question. So yeah, very, very interesting question, that one. Okay, what we'll do then is we'll sort of leave it there for this part because I'm, I'm just sort of conscious that I don't want to sort of run over uh, too long in this video. Um, I try and like keep these parts preferably less than um, sort of uh, 20 minutes, but around about 15 minutes I try to aim for. So I'll leave it there for, for this part. Um, I hope this video has been um, helpful for you. If you've um, found this helpful, then please let me know in the comments. I know there's been quite a lot of great support on um, videos that I've done and I'm really glad it's it's helping people um, understand uh, maths a little bit better. So thank you again for watching this video and I hope you have a fantastic day.